Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Welcome to the Cheat Sheet for Free Base Map and Elevation Data Webinar. Hi, everyone. My name is Drew, and I'm really excited to be here today. And I will be presenting you with my go-to websites uh, where I find free base map files and elevation data uh, that I can uh, not only use in surfer projects, but other mapping and modeling apps. So uh, for those of you that use Strata and Voxler, this information I detail today will also be applicable to you. All right, before I get started, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping things. So after uh, the discussion of each topic today, I'm going to stop for just a couple minutes to answer any questions that may came up. You can always send your questions to the webinar host using the QA button, uh, which is located on the Zoom toolbar at any time. Uh, this is where you can type in your question. It'll be sent over to our webinar host, who is Jake, who can either answer it himself or then forward it on to me to answer. Um, just as a reminder, please use that QA function rather than the chat function. Uh, this will allow the host to ensure uh, that we see all questions in a timely manner. And of course, we want to get all of your questions answered. So please feel free to send in your questions at any time during the presentation. And if we don't uh, end up having time to answer all of them during the webinar today, uh, we will follow up with you via email um, after the webinar is complete. We're also going to be recording today. So later this week, we will be posting a recording along with the data we used. And uh, this will allow you to uh, follow through uh, if you want to with the recording uh, and test out the examples yourself. All right, today we're going to be covering um, how to acquire base map and elevation data for free from a number of different online sources that are on my virtual cheat sheet for downloading free base map and elevation data. I'm gonna show you the sites where I go to um, when I start looking for free online data and where I'm starting a mapping project. Now, of course, there are gonna be numerous um, sites out there online available that serve data. Um, what I'm gonna show you today is uh, the ones that I like best. And again, are the ones that I like to start with when I'm looking for data. All right, so these locations are going to include, you can see my list here on screen. Um, we're going to start with accessing data from our FTP site um, on the Golden Software Support site. We'll also talk about downloading uh, vector data from D uh, Diva GIS. Uh, we'll look at downloading uh, a raster uh, base map from the National Earth site. Also be discuss uh, discussing the National Map Server, which of course, this is my favorite site. Uh, out of all of them, and then we'll also be uh, downloading some data from the Aster Dem site. Uh, and I will be uh, talking about these uh, and showing you what they all have to offer as well when we access these sites. So you can see there's a lot of sites here to cover within an hour. So I'm going to go ahead um, and, and get started. Okay, when I uh, first start out a mapping project in Surfer or any other app, I, I typically like to start out with adding some uh, very basic style boundary files that uh, are in the area of interest that I'm working in. Um, these are typically going to be vector files in nature, um, such as a shapefile or DXF, KML, um, GSI, E00, um, et cetera, okay, any of the supported vector um, files inside of Surfer. So you can see here on the screen, I've opened up a server, uh, Surfer project uh, where I already have um, the US state boundaries, at least for the 48 states. Um, and you can see this is a fairly simple boundary file. And this is what I'm gonna um, start on and build with uh, for my first example today. So the first data source that I wanna show you on my virtual cheat sheet uh, is gonna be our FTP offerings from our uh, support site, and then download a few boundary files for that area that I'm going to be working in. Okay. Let me flip over to my web browser here. Oh, you can see here in my web browser that I've navigated to our support website. Of course, that's right up here at the top, um, support.goldsoftware.com. 
And this is where we offer a lot of support materials, including uh, a link to our FTP, uh, where we can download some boundary files. All right, and to get some access here to uh, our boundary files, what we're going to do is simply type in boundary files and server. And you can see the very top search result is a nice um, knowledge base article. I'm going to click on this knowledge base article. And then you can see um, what we have available as far as boundary files that you can download directly from us. And we have a number of different categories that are going to be on our FTP site. Of course, this is just the, the KB article. Um, we will be linking to the FTP in just a sec. Um, but first, I wanted to show you exactly what we have available. And we've got a number of different categories where we've got point locations for cities. Um, we've got a USGS digital line um, graph file set. We have county data from the United States for both 2000 and 2010. And then some additional US uh, miscellaneous boundary files. Uh, what's really nice here is we do have I'm going to highlight it for you. The PLSS or township range boundaries that are going to be a lot long uh, for uh, available for uh, most of the states here in the United States. So if you're ever working in township range, this is a good spot uh, to grab some uh, boundary files. We also offer some road data, highway data, um, some administrative boundaries from 2009 um, globally. We also have some miscellaneous global files and then um, zip code files from uh, 2000, okay? And that's both the three, zip code three, it was the larger polygons and the smaller polygons for zip code five. All right, so uh, up here in the top paragraph, you see this nice blue link. I'm gonna go ahead and click this link. This is gonna give me access to our FTP site where we can download the data directly from it. All right, so this is going to be our FTP um, site uh, uh, user interface or the access to it. And you can see that we have those same uh, exact categories that were listed on the KB article. All right, and again, I want to download some boundary files for inside the US. So I'm going to click US County um, 2010. And then we have our download page where we can click on any of these files and then download directly. Um, to our machine. All right, so uh, for my first example, I'm going to download some boundary files from California, Oregon, Nevada, Arizona, Idaho, and Utah. Okay, so let me go ahead and start these downloads. Again, just by simply clicking the GSB file is what I want to use. Okay, and that is a vector file in nature. Get Idaho here, and then also Utah. All right, so now the files have been downloaded. You can see that was pretty quick. I'm going to switch back to uh, my project here at Surfer, where I can add these um, files as base layers um, to my existing map. Now, these can all be added simply by going up to the ribbon. First, by making sure our map is selected, of course, by either clicking um, the top level map object here in the contents window or by clicking the map in the main plot window. And then I'm going to go up to the ribbon and click home, add some map, and in my layer drop down, I'm going to select base. All right, so I'm going to navigate to my data here. And we have added. Um, multi-selection here for adding base layers to Surfer a few versions ago. So I can simply just click on the files that I want to add here um, to my map using the holding down the control key. We go, and now that I have everything selected that I want to add to the map, I can simply click open and these files will be added 
as you can see here to the Western United States here in my map. All right, so now that we can see these uh, state boundaries and the county boundaries have been added to the to those select states here in the Western uh, part of the United States. Uh, before I do anything, I'd like to um, adjust the spatial extent for the map so that we can be focused on a portion uh, of the United States where it contains these states. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do these, uh, adjust the limits manually on screen. Of course, by using map tools, map tools set limits. And when I do so, you can see uh, that everything outside of my map has been shaded in gray. And then we also have these nice little green grips here where I can uh, uh, manually adjust the boundaries here or the limits rather to the area that I'm working in. Once I get a, a, a nice defined area like this, I can click enter and the uh, limits automatically change. And we've clipped out everything that we don't want uh, to be in the map. Now that the limits have been adjusted, um, it's obvious that my map needs to be rescaled. So let me do that really quick. And then I'll zoom in here just a little bit so we can see it better. All right, so for the next uh, data source that I want to show you on my virtual cheat sheet is the Natural Earth data site. And this is where you want to download some background imagery um, for the map here that will give us um, some more context and really brighten things up. And to do this, I really like some of the raster layers uh, on the Natural Earth site um, that offers to download. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. I'm going to click back to my web browser. And then I'm going to click over to our natural earth um, data site. And this is naturalearthdata.com. So on this site, um, the natural earth site offers a number of different uh, base map downloads, which uh, includes cultural and physical data sets, which are um, going to be in vector format. And then also some raster base layers, um, which work really good for the background layers. Uh, in your mapping projects. I really like these, and I'll take a look at these in a sec. Uh, but before I download some data, um, I wanted to click through some of the available files um, so that you gain a little bit of familiarity uh, with what the Natural Earth site has to offer. And to view the data, um, before we can get there, you need to click the Get the Data button right here. And it takes you to our downloads page. And on the downloads page, um, you can see that Natural Earth is going to offer data in three different scales. So, um, and that really means three different uh, levels of detail, right? And so we've got some large scale data. Um, this is going to contain um, the most detail uh, out of any of these uh, groups, medium scale data, and then small scale data. Um, just, just as a recommendation, I, I typically uh, start working with the large scale data to see if it has um, uh, too much detail. If it does, then I move down to the smaller or medium scale uh, data sets. When I click on the cultural button, you can see uh, that Natural Earth has a ton of things to offer here as far as uh, vector data, um, basic country, uh, country rather boundaries. And then um, this is all downloadable um, in a group. Or we can do um, certain regions here or countries. And then we've got some uh, admin boundaries, again, that contain um, some different type of uh, mapping units and uh, additional detail. And as I scroll down a little bit further, we have state and provinces. And then there's also county data available here as well. Transportation, railroads, airports, um, urban areas, time zones, and even park and protected lands. So you can see there's a ton of data here culturally. And additionally, there's some physical data, which I find uh, very intriguing on this website, especially if you're working on coastal areas. Um, this Natural Earth site has a ton of good information 
uh, as far as the bathymetric renderings of the seafloor, coastlines, islands, uh, rivers and lakes, also reservoirs. So as I just kind of scroll down here, even Arctic ice shelves and the glaciated areas. And then here at the bottom is a really nice set of bathymetry uh, base maps. And these are all derived from the, the SRTM or shuttle missions. So I think that gives you a, a pretty good look of what we have, uh, what, what Natural Earth has to offer here on our website. And again, what I'm looking for is going to be a raster layer that I'm going to use um, underneath of the vector data on the mapping project. And so in this large scale uh, raster data section, um, there's a number of different um, styles of raster base layers. Um, I particularly like the cross bend, uh, blended uh, hypso metric tint. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Okay, and this uh, tinted, um, these blended or tinted rasters really do provide a really nice background for any mapping project. And um, the coloring you see uh, in these files are, is going to be based on elevation uh, data and then also. Um, colors that people are reasonably associated um, with the surrounding uh, natural environment. So it's a, a mix of elevation and, and land cover data, if you will, which I think is pretty neat. Um, I, I particularly like uh, this cross blended with shaded relief, water, and then the, also the drainage, um, uh, the drainages or rivers across this, um, the area of interest. You can see that uh, Natural Earth offers two different sizes. Um, one's very, very large and the other is, is fairly large. So um, I'm going to start downloading um, the medium size and then flip back to Surfer and then we're going to add this in as a base layer to our map. All right, again, um, to add uh, another layer to the map, I can simply make sure my map's selected. You can see that by the bounding box here. Um, go over to on the home ribbon to the add to map section and the layer drop down. Again, I'm going to select base. All right, you can see that I have that file already unzipped here. I'm going to select it and click open to add it, add it to the map. Give server just a, a moment to think here. Surfer is giving me a warning message that um, the file that I just imported is larger than the existing bounds. And do I want to um, change the bounds to take on the new file? Since I've just um, changed the limits here for my map, I'm going to go ahead and click no. And then you can see that nice um, uh, blended base layer that's been added underneath my vector data. Before I think, do anything else here, I'm going to change my line properties just of my states here so you can see those a little bit more clearly. And then I wanted to access uh, another site that's on my cheat sheet. So I'm going to flip back to my web, web browser and we're going to go to the Diva GIS site. And this site is uh, a really great site that offers uh, vector data for. Um, at, at aggregated at the country level that's um, global. So you can find data for all over the world here. Um, in this site here, we can click the free spatial data tab at the very top. And we're going to be um, accessing this country level vector data, but there are some other um, there are some other options here. So there is some, some 90 meter a very kind of coarse resolution elevation data available, uh, climate data, and some other things here. But uh, to access this country level data, I'm going to click on the link right here under country level data. And you can see that um, we have a drop down here at the very top where we can select what country we want um, to download from. Of course, I'm working in the Western United States. And before I select my category, I just wanted to briefly show you they've got a nice little 
uh, table here that shows you what we actually uh, what they had available. All right, so there is some uh, raster data here, climate data, population, land cover, elevation. We're not going to be um, accessing the elevation here. I'll be showing you that here in just a moment. Um, roads, railroads, inlaid water, and some admin boundaries themselves. So what I'm looking for here is some road data that I want to add to my map. So I'm going to change my uh, category here to subject to the roads. Click OK. And when I do so, I get a, a link to download. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And of course, flip back to my map. And let's add, um, add the roads layer in like we've done um, with the other layers. This time, I'm actually going to right click on top of uh, the, this top level map object or the map frame inside the contents window. And of course, we make uh, Surfer really easy to use where um, the we have access to a lot of the different commands in different locations. So um, I'm going to go ahead and select the base. This is just the same thing as I'm selecting to add a base layer from, from the ribbon. All right, so I'm going to uh, navigate to my roads file here, click open, and have those added to the map as well. Again, I don't want to adjust my limits, so I'm going to tell Surfer no. You can see that we have uh, the roads have been added to uh, the map. They are a little bit busy, um, I feel like. So I'm going to change these, uh, change the properties of the roads themselves to be uh, a little less visible by just uh, dropping down the, the color to 50% black that we don't have such a cluttered map. All right, so now that we have a really uh, a great looking base map here in Surfer uh, that we can start adding data to. I'm going to uh, add a, a single data set here uh, that I'm going to uh, download from another data source that's on my virtual cheat sheet. So the next site that I would like to show everyone is the AstroDEM site, um, which is going to be powered by NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab. Um, let me go ahead and flip over to that real quick. All right, so now you see the AstroDEM site. Okay, this, this site is going to um, offer a ton of different raster or, or gridded data um, that's going to be uh, all derived from satellite imaging or remote sensing. Okay, and so we can access, there's, there's tons of different data sets on here. We can access the data either by clicking the NASA Earth Data link or uh, the uh, Japan Space Systems link. We go ahead and do so. And this is going to bring up their browser. Okay, and so let me collapse a little bit of this so you can see. Um, I think this browser is really, really easy to work with. Right, so I'm going to zoom in here to the area that we're uh, focusing on with our mapping project. And of course, that's going to be the Western United States. And since I live in, the, in, in this Western part of the United States, I'm, I'm always interested in, in seeing where the current wildfire, uh, what the current wildfire situation is. And this Earth Data Browser allows me to download um, a variety of different data sets again, including wildfire data. So before I enter some information here, what I want to search on, uh, I'm going to go ahead and draw a polygon using their polygon tool um, so I can highlight um, our area of interest. And if you remember, it is just about right about here. And when doing so, I can then move over to the left hand panel um, and search for whatever type of data that I want. Okay, and there'll be elevation data, earth data, uh, soil concentration data, soil uh, moisture data, land cover data, etc. I mean, the, the number of different data sets on here is, is endless. And before I do any searching here, I wanted to show you another uh, great thing I like about this particular uh, data platform is uh, the vast variety of different uh, file formats that you can find data in. So as I scroll down here, you can see um, all of this, I believe, uh, is available to be 
um, with a maybe with the session of the UFR data, um, everything on this list can be added to um, Surfer as either a base map or a grid based layer. Again, I want to um, search some, for some wildfire data. So I'm just going to go ahead and search uh, in this section. You can see that I came back with, um, they gave me 116 different matching collections of data. So I can scroll through these here and show you. Um, what I've located is some hotspot data, which is going to show me the, uh, the real life locations of wildfires that have been reported uh, in our area of interest in the last 48 hours. So I don't really have time to scroll through all these, but uh, I assure you that it's there. Um, and I've already, to save time, it was quite a big download. Um, I've downloaded this into a KML file. And let's go ahead and add this to the map. This time again, I'm going to right click here on um, the map, top level map objects or the map frame, choose add to map. And since it's a KML file, I'll be adding it as a base layer. So my fire spot data is from MODIS. Click OK. And then I'll also click OK and then import options dialog so I can accept the defaults. And again, server's telling me that this file is larger extent-wise. I don't want to expand. And then you can see here there are um, some fires, wildfires, but they're, they're uh, due to the symbology, it's a little bit hard to see. All right, so let, before I open things up for questions, I'm going to go ahead here and change my uh, symbol properties so I can see these a little bit better. And then also... Um, change the coloring here. All right, you can see these a little bit more clearly. Uh, again, these are wildfires that have been uh, reported in the last 48 hours. And, all right, so now that I've shown you uh, a handful of my favorite data source websites, um, I wanted to, to open it up um, to everyone, see if there's any questions that came up. So if you have any questions, please feel free to send those on over to Jake so we can get those answered. The first question, question is, uh, what's the best format to get um, elevation contour data from the Aster site? And, you know, I think anything that it that they serve up that's going to be available. All these data sets are going to be available in all these data formats that we have here. GeoTIFF would work, HDF would work, uh, NetCDF would work. So um, there's another, all the, any of the ASCII grid files would work. That's a great question. Uh, and if you're working in the US, I'm going to show you another site here um, on, in my next example. So, uh, okay. Okay, so uh, I'm, the next question is, why does the roads layer have a pin on the layer list? So these, uh, these little icons here indicate that those are in uh, a selected and then editing mode. For example, you only see this with, um, with vector uh, base layers. Anything that, let's say that I had the roads uh, levels selected, anything that I drew using um, our drawing tools would be then drawn to that layer. Okay, and so this is just a good indicator that it's being selected and it's also in edit mode. Okay, so um, I have another question, and this looks like I the uh, uh, I only have time to answer this one last question here, and then uh, I'll address some questions at the very end. So um, the next question is: There a way to add a symbol at a certain location on the map? Uh, certainly, we can do it two ways. You can add it from a data file. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. Um, I'm going to add a, a base. This is going to be a, a base from data layer. All right. Where I can select an Excel file that contains the lat long uh, coordinates for. Um, 
for our city. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. Of course, set my A and B or my X and Y columns rather correctly and click OK. All right, or we can simply um, add one in if we want by adding an empty base layer. So, all right, and so you can see that these two um, white dots here, I'm going to make them white, are city locations. San Fran and LA, you can see those right here. We could also add an empty base layer and uh, manually insert a point. So let me add an empty base layer here. Once I have an empty base layer, I can select it. We see those two little icons and I can insert a point any, any place I'd like. All right, so you can see that I added a point right there. All right, great questions, everyone. If any other questions come up during this next portion of the webinar, please feel free to send those on over to Jake. I'd be happy to answer those um, at the end of the presentation. All right, switching gears a little bit, everyone, uh, for my uh, second example today, and we're going to be taking a look at downloading elevation data uh, that you can use to uh, you know, create any grid-based file inside of Surfer. So when, when we're doing so, we're going to be accessing uh, my absolute favorite website for downloading uh, data, which is the national map, uh, of course, is powered by the USGS. And so let's go ahead and tab over. And here we go to the national map. Okay, and again, I find this to be uh, my favorite and the very best place to download elevation and topographic data for inside the US. Okay, so please note this is for inside the US. The National Map offers uh, a number of other uh, data layers to data sets like watersheds, uh, we've got imagery, governmental boundaries, etc. All right, so to access the data that's on this site, we need to launch the viewer. So I'm just gonna click on this launch button under the data download application. When we do so, we see a very similar uh, data download platform that we saw with um, uh, that Earth data site that we were just talking about. So uh, over here on uh, the left-hand panel, we do see uh, in this data section, the, the number of, or the availability of the data that's served up on this website. So we've got access to a number of different uh, national programs, including this national boundary data set. We also have access to NAEP or the National Agriculture In Inventory Program. Excuse me, it's a little hard to say. And this is where we can download a very nice imagery uh, at one meter to one foot resolution. Okay, and so this is some great stuff. Uh, I always uh, recommend that uh, users go here to download imagery if they're working in the United States, uh, rather than uh, trying to clip imagery from Google Earth and then geo-reference it, because all these files that are served here on the national map are going to be spatially referenced, all right? So that's going to save you a little bit of time where you don't have to geo-reference. So, and I find the quality just as good as um, what you would be clipping out of Google Earth. And I'm not going to be downloading um, anything today from uh, the name server via uh, the national map because I'm going to show you how to do it directly in Surfer using WMS here in just a couple of minutes. All right, and we also have, um, which I really love, is the three debt access to the three debt program here, and this is um, USGS's uh, three three D elevation data set. Um, it's going to consist of a, a number of different things: uh, raw lidar point clouds. And then uh, also digital elevation models to be downloaded in a, bit, uh, a variety of formats. Uh, and again, this is all going to be available for free. So this is great. Uh, again, this is going to be my go-to source for 
elevation data for inside the US. You know, you can find it for just about anywhere. And one of the, uh, again, one of the other really good things that I like, uh, advantages of using data from this website is that just about anything that's served up is going to be spatially referenced. And if we look onto the list here, you know, um, you can see that they have a number of other uh, vector and raster data sets available to download. So um, just make mental note of these if you want to uh, come back to this website and um, view some of the other data that they have available to download for free. All right, so um, let's go ahead and download some elevation data from the three debt program. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here to our area of interest, which is going to be uh, right outside of Denver and the town of Morris, Colorado. So you can see Denver, and I'm just kind of zooming in here a little bit so I can um, get to the area that I would like to work in, which is going to be uh, this area, which is in the foothills right outside of, of Denver and uh, Morris, Colorado. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to select uh, which product, data product, I want to download. So again, we're working we're working with elevation data, and I'm going to look at this three depth data. And from the elevation product, from this particular elevation products category, um, you're going to see that um, everything that's accessible here is going to be in den format. So it's already uh, pre gridded. So you. You know, if you're looking for a quick way to get elevation data, this is a great place to go as you can download all uh, pre pre gridded data. Um, the different resolutions here, you're going to see that uh, the arc second is going to be uh, probably the most coarse. I'm going to look for a one meter dem. Um, third arc second dem is going to have more resolution. Same with the ninth, uh, one ninth. Right, and there's some other options here as well. So in order to find uh, information here, uh, we do need to put an extent in it. And what I'm gonna do is something similar. I'm gonna draw, as I did in the previous site, um, I'm gonna draw a bounding box around the area that I want uh, to extract data from this website from. Try that one more time. So I'm simply just going to draw a nice little box around my area of interest. Let me trim that down just a little bit here. And then I can simply go over here to the left-hand panel again and click Surf Products. And when I search the product, uh, the data projects products, um, they're going to come up with uh, whatever is found in that area that I have checked. So. Uh, we can see that this is going to be a GeoTIFF, which is a, a supported grid format now in Surfer. And I can click right here to download. Let's go ahead and do so. And you can see it's quite a large file. I've already downloaded this file to save some time. And I'm back in Surfer now. I'd like to create a contour map or a color relief rather. Uh, from this data that I've downloaded. All right. I'll select my GeoTIFF, click open, and click OK to accept the defaults. And then give Surfer just a minute or two to load the file. And there we have it. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here just a little bit so you can see um, the immense detail on this 3 dot data that I've downloaded. So as you can see, this is uh, this is some very detailed data for the for the location that I'm looking at um, in color relief format. There are some of you that will uh, also want to download um, raw data for 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 the elevation data and then actually grid it yourself inside of Surfer. Um, this this is available, so let's go ahead and download some data in the same area. But this time, I'm going to check my elevation source data, right? So this is going to be uh, more of the raw data that we have uh, available uh, or have access to from the USGS website here. Um, and what I'm interested in is this raw point cloud data, the LPC. 
Okay, so I have that checked. And again, the same process, I'm gonna go up here um, and click search products. And when I do so, I see um, all of the LiDAR point clouds that are available uh, for this particular spot. And you can see as I scroll over or mouse over any of these point clouds, you can see that their uh, footprint is highlighted on the map. So I really like these um, top two right here. I can see the footprint, those fit pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and download the LAZ file, which is uh, just a zip version of the LAS. That's for that LiDAR file. All right, so um, start a new project here and let's take a look at those point clouds. Okay, when we're working with LiDAR data, similar to what um, that I've similar to, to all that, that served up on the national map and what I've downloaded, we can um, create point cloud layers from this data. So I'm going to go ahead and start off my map with uh, a point cloud that I've downloaded here from the national map. Okay, so when I do so, uh, we see the import uh, points dialog. One of the things that I like about the 3 uh LAS or LAZ data is that it's um, already been classified using the ASPRS classification system, which means that uh, I can turn off my classifications here and select only the ground returns, and those will come back uh, when I'm creating the map. Sometimes I like to downsample the data because it's going to be a huge point cloud. Um, so I've went ahead and checked uh, my sample, my resampling checkbox here, and I'm going to click OK to create the point cloud layer. All right, there we go. You can see that uh, we have a nice point cloud layer. I'm going to add the other one here. Uh, LAS file, uh, excuse me, LAZ file, again, as a point cloud layer to the map as well. Okay, in my import points dialog, I'm going to use the same thing, just uh, selecting the ground returns and then downsample the file a little bit. Again, downsampling is, is totally going to be okay in this uh, situation as I don't need that um layer of detail or amount of detail in the map this time servers asking me if i want to expand my limits i'm going to say yes and then i'm going to click ok we could view this data in the 3d viewer as well so these are just the two point cloud layers there is a little bit of an inconsistency in the color mapping we can um, certainly adjust that inside the plot window if needed. I just wanted to show you, and the, again, this is not even gridded data. This is just uh, points that are side by side okay, in the point cloud. So let's go back here uh, in server and I'm going to grid the, the two files um, so that we have a surface I can drape an image on. All right, so selecting one of the files uh, in the uh, contents window, I go up to the ribbon and go to point cloud features, create grid. All right, so you can see that we have full gridding control here. Uh, my spacing is a little coarse. I think that's just fine for this example, but you could most certainly adjust this if you wanted to. I'm going to tell Surfer I want to add uh, a contour layer uh, from this grid file I'm creating to my existing map. And uh, the other thing is I'm working on the elevation or those ground returns here. So let's go ahead and create the grid file. Server also prompts me to save the um, spatial reference information, which is great. Um, I'm gonna click OK, and let's add the contours to our So you can see on the bottom here that the contours have been added. That's great. I'm gonna do the same exact thing for um, the other point cloud layer. Again, I'm up in the ribbon, point cloud features and create grid. Everything looks good, same settings. I'm going to save the spatial referencing information. 
And then you can see the contours have been added. All right, one last thing that I wanted to do here um, before I open things up for questions again is to show you one last uh, place where you can get data. And I know I mentioned when we were working in the national map um, about the NAEP imagery. Uh, we can add NAEP imagery directly through our WMS connectivity in server directly into the map. So that does save you a little bit of time. Let's take a look at that. So again, I'm going to add another layer to my map. This time I'm going to use base from server. Okay. And this gives us access to the WMS connectivity inside of server. So what we're seeing here is our download online maps dialog where we have uh, preloaded this with a number of different sites. Um, of course, these are third party sites and we don't have any control on whether or not these sites are uh, going to be online or down. So please do uh, make note of that. We do see from time to time that some of these sites don't work. And of course, you can add other WMS uh, sites to these, uh, to the downline online maps uh, dialog. So if that's something that you work with commonly WMS servers, you might want to look at adding those directly into um, uh, this download online maps dialog. Again, I was going to look for NAEP imagery. So I've expanded that um, server. And let's go find our server layer here. And this one is online right now. So uh, that's great. And you can see here, zoom on just a little bit. You can see my yellow bounty box. Uh, that is the limits of my map, which have been automatically converted to uh, lat long. Um, and that's what defines this bounty box. And then right below that, there is an image uh, resolution slider. You can see as I click up this that the resolution of the pixel um, dimensions do increase. And we can go all the way up to a really, really large image if we wanted to. I'm going to keep it right about in the middle, about a 40 uh, megabyte image. And then click OK to have this downloaded directly into the map. Again, I'm going to tell Surfer, no, I don't want to expand the limits. As with any other uh, raster base layer, it goes onto the bottom of the map stack. So I'm going to simply just drag it up a little bit so we can see it and zoom in. And you can see that we have this great looking image here uh, of the area that I was interested in. And now let's tab over uh, to the 3D view and take a look at what this looks like uh, with that image draped over those, those grid files or contour layers. All right, you can see that I have uh, a really nice looking base model here with some contours, um, some excellent 3D elevation. And this would be a really good place to start working on a mapping project. All right, so I'm going to open it back up here. We're getting close to the end of the hour. I'm going to open it back up for any questions that may have came up. So if you have anything uh, that you need answered, please go ahead and shoot those on over to Jake using the QA function. And we'd like to get those uh, answered. So I do have a few minutes here to answer questions. What's the easiest way? This is a really good question. What's the easiest way of combining those two grid files um, so the contours match? And what I'll do here is I'll just turn these off. You can see there's a, a little line here. Now they're pretty close. Uh, but what I could do here is I could go up to the grids menu. Let's see here. I can use the mosaic command. And when I do, I can select my two grid files. And you can see that uh, it's going to, what Mosaic is going to do, it's going to mosaic or stitch both of these together, create a new grid file. And I'm going to have named out here and I'm going to have this added to our map as a contour layer. So, and of course we do have full geometry control. If I wanted to make this, you know, a little tighter or, or coarse, I could. Of course I'm prompted for the spatial referencing information. Turn off my other contours here. 
and to show you how this is uh, one continuous file here, let me get some, here we go. Okay, so you can see the controversy of match here. All right, I have another question from the first example. Could you comment on uh, apparent boundary distortion with lab long versus state plane or UTM coordinates? Um, sure. I don't. I I personally don't think there's any distortion when you're looking at look at my first example. Um, what we're looking at is lat long. It's unprojected here, right? Unprojected. That means one unit is the same in in both directions here, viewing wise. Of course, we know that's not true on the surface of the Earth. Um, I could certainly change this to a UTM zone if I was. Um, working in a smaller area, since this spans multiple states, that really wouldn't be an appropriate system to use or, or state plane, um, but those will be uh, uniform in the X and Y directions as well. Okay, we've got another question. This is a really good one as well. How can you export shape files that you uh, created based on the coordinate system of the map? So that's, so what we could do is we could change the coordinate system, right? To whatever we want here and then simply turn off our axes and then export so let's say we wanted to here's a here's a pretty good example i'm going to turn off some of the data here um, and a good example would be to exporting um, all these county boundaries here uh, to a single a single one right and so if I change the coordinate system here from, let's say UTN, or I'm sorry, World Geodetic System to, uh, let's say NAT 27, that'd be easily easily done here. So I went a little too far. NAT 27, it's fine. And then I can export here by using file export. And my export will be in the SNAT 27 system. So let's just take a look at example. I'm just going to name this. Oops. I'm going to name this test. Make sure my spatial referencing is being saved. I'm clicking OK. And then I can start a new project here and I'll show you. So we test poly, here we go. This is everything. And you can see that this is in, uh, that NAT 27. So you need to switch the, uh, switch the system and then turn off the axes and export. Okay. All right, I do have time for um, another question or two here. If anybody has anything, please go ahead and send those on over to me. Okay, looks like we've gotten all the questions answered. And so that concludes my presentation uh, today. So thank you everyone for joining us. I hope uh, I provided enough information that uh, you were able to learn something new. Now later this week, we will be sending uh, everyone a, a, a link via email um, so they can watch the recording of today's presentation. And um, if you have any questions from there, please, Obviously, contact service support at goldsoftware.com. On behalf of Gold Software, we appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us today.